Okay, next, next thing to say a few words uh, about that I think are, again, very, very important. What gives you value is not what you know. It's how you, it's how you operate. It's how you sit down with a client, how you can communicate with a client, how you can understand what he's doing. And this is just as true for somebody who's in an in, you know, in-house counsel position within a large company, except that your client are, your client is the uh, internal people within the company as opposed to a client in the uh, outside advisor sense. Your ability to understand what they're doing, ask questions, learn about the background sufficiently so that you can recognize issues and you can help them. You have, okay, maybe your time is limited, you don't have all the time in the world, but, but still, when you learn about something, you have the ability to go back to your office, sit down, think about it a little bit, talk to your colleagues about the situation, you know, what are the issues, this, that, and the other. Your methodology to be able to do this, to recognize issues, to attempt to figure out, okay, these are the issues, what are the answers? and then eventually sit down with whoever the client is, whoever the decision maker is, and be effective at communicating to them, orally and in writing. Who's your audience? Is your audience a technical person uh, who knows as many code sections as you do? Fine, write for that person. If your audience is an operations guy, don't talk to them. Don't write to him that way. You'll lose interest so fast it will make your head spin. Show him uh, that you're interested in his business. Not that you are interested in showing him what you know. This is one of the worst offenses I've seen in professionals over the course of my career come in to see somebody, gee, uh, uh, you know, the tax rate here is 25% and in all income is taxable. Well, no, that's not responsive to whatever the guy's needs are, whatever the client's needs are. So listening and doing this as a practice, irrespective of, you know, what you might know or might not know, this is what's relevant, to, that makes you a valuable person. Uh, you're probably valuable anyway, even if you don't have this, but that's a different issue. <laughs> <clears throat> this will allow you to charge hundreds of dollars an hour for your time. Just being valuable as a person generally probably doesn't allow you that. <laughs>
Well, if your professional comes to you and says, gee, I'm interested in the directional drilling business, tell me about it. And, you know, he believes you have a genuine interest, you're going to hear all sorts of wonderful things. And especially if you maybe read his company literature before you actually go and talk to him a little bit. You look at his website. God, he will absolutely love you. <laughs> In every professional's career, you do everything perfectly, right? Never make mistakes? Sure. Sure, okay. <laughs> well, the reality is that, yes, yeah, professionals, we make mistakes. We stub our toes, so to speak. You know, we sometimes give a wrong answer. If the client loves you, do you think that's a major problem under normal circumstances? Probably not. Yeah, it's a minor hiccup. We'll figure out and we'll go forward. But if the client doesn't love you and you make a mistake, that can be a problem with your whole relationship. So being genuinely interested in the client's business gives you information which you would never have otherwise that allows you to give better service because, yeah, you understand his business. Who are his competitors? Where are they operating? What is... Uh, you know, what people are doing, what, where. I mean, you, you're able to give advice and recognize issues you would not otherwise be able to do. And that benefit, when you, you know, make that mistake, you're going to, you know, uh, make at some point in the future, you'll end up being forgiven, probably. So there's every reason in the world I cannot overemphasize this enough. It's so, so important. Uh, again, you know, I'm sort of hitting on this already, but getting the factual background. That this step of learning to get information from your client is the most important step. Everything else depends on it. You can't figure out what the issues are if you don't know enough background information. And figuring out issues actually becomes very, very easy. Now you may today say, God, that's terrible. How do I recognize issues? Well, uh, it, the first time you see something, you will, uh, let's say, learn something the first time. Fine, it's normal. The second time you see something, gee, that sounds familiar. The third time you see something, gee, there's an issue there. I mean, let's just take a, an example from one that, uh, that I hope you did a little bit of studying on, since I understand it was one of your, uh, <clears throat> one of your subjects last, uh, last quarter, and that was uh, the foreign earned income exclusion. You know, as a person has to be a, you know, a bona fide resident of a foreign country, or be physically present for a certain period of time. Well, it doesn't take too much effort after you've seen, you know, a few uh, persons who have qualified for this uh, to realize that if somebody tells you, uh, you know, gee, I spend, you know, half my time, you know, back at home office in, uh, in Seattle, and, oh, by the way, my uh, wife and children, you know, never went to... Uh, uh, this place where I'm claiming bona fide residency, uh, well, maybe you have a problem. You at least have an issue that needs closer looking. So as you gain experience, issues will actually become very easy for you. Again, that may sound intimidating today, but you will find that becomes easy. So the most important thing is getting the background in the first place. You can't do any of the, any, I mean, you can 
only with a complete background can you do the other steps successfully. And as you gain more experience, those other steps uh, will get easier and easier. Like I say, the rest is easy. Uh, you know, research in the comfort of your office. Chat with colleagues. You know, identify alternative solutions. And, you know, communicate them. Figure out who the decision maker is. Make sure he understands the risks. All of this is methodology. It has nothing to do with what the subject matter that we're studying is. And this is what makes you really valuable. Now, this is a, uh, I thought a little bit about uh, whether to put in a slide on this subject, because periodically over the years, uh, I've heard people say, well, you know, gee, I'm spending all this time studying subpart F, and, you know, my God, every few years, Congress goes through self-flagellation to uh, decide whether or not to do away with it. Or, gee, I really became an expert in, uh, uh, in the, uh, in my case, Domestic International Sales Corporation. If you look back far enough to the mid-1970s, you'll see an article on the, in the Journal of Tax on some obscure aspect of the subject. Well, as a practical matter, they went away. Yeah, they're still in the tax code, but it'll be, as they say, a cold day in hell before you actually see one in real life. Recently, in 2004, the foreign personal holding company rules went away. What if you're an expert in that? My God, all this, all this education, all this effort to become expert in something, and it's gone. Should be able to do that better. It's gone. Well, is that a problem? If you realize that it's methodology which makes you valuable, your ability to work within whatever this environment, this matrix-like construct is, doesn't matter at all. Your knowledge of different industries, your knowledge of tire leasing, if that happens to be uh, something that you have clients that are doing, all of these things, your accumulated experiences, those are the things that make you valuable. It's not what tax law specifically is there or not there. So don't be afraid if we, let's say, have a flat tax instead of what we have. These issues will still be there. Because business people are trying to do things. They need advice under the new system, just as they did under the old. It won't make you any less valuable. In fact, it probably makes you more valuable because now, because there's a new system, everybody needs advice as to how to operate within the new system. And especially in the international area, where you're you know, dealing with, a, let's say, a lot more variables, uh, you're, uh, it's sort of a, I guess, a full employment act uh, each, time, each time there's a change, whether it's a simplica simplification in reality or the usual uh, uh, more complication. So, Please, don't be afraid of change. 